Hello everybody and welcome to part 28 of Kerbal Space Program, The Journey Continues. At the end of the last episode we finally, after a bit of faff, managed to get our interplanetary craft, the Galileo, back to our space station, the Socrates, following its expedition to Moho. Up in orbit then, we have four Kerbals that are desperate to come home, along with a healthy bounty of science that they've brought back from their mission, which, uh, which will need recovering and bringing back to the KSC. So we've launched our space plane from the KSC to go and fetch all of these items. Uh, Tommel Kerman is in command for this one, and uh, our science officer Jebloff will be seeing the safe retrieval of all the, uh, all the experiments that uh, we need to bring back. Uh, it's not the best descent I've ever managed. Uh, that's the problem with space planes. It's kind of easy to fluff one bit and then uh, that obviously has a knock-on effect with everything else. But eventually we do manage to get ourselves into space, ready to start making our way towards the space station. Generally speaking, this craft does need a few design revisions, as I've said many times. Uh, we can't really take any significant payload up to the space station, which is kind of the aim for this one, was to... Uh, get it to uh, to compete with my previous Mark II shuttle, but uh, as I've also said many times, I am uh, I'm somewhat reluctant to start tinkering around with it uh, because it does the job for now, it does what we need it to do, but yes, there's, uh, there's a couple of minor changes I think will be happening imminently. Our rendezvous with the space station doesn't go much better. Uh, the burn time indicator is up to its usual tricks and we, uh, we overshoot a fair bit, but as we're coming back handily, the sun is just about to rise, so we, uh, we get some daylight as we begin our docking manoeuvres. We carefully bring our craft into dock with the space station's main docking port and uh, having securely attached ourselves, we can set about our tasks of uh, fetching that science and those crew members. We start with the science. Uh, on our MOHO mission we took two sets of readings for most experiments, one of which is going to be processed up here on the science lab, but for some of those experiments we took three readings. So I've brought two experiment storage containers up, one to transfer the bulk of those experiments in there, that second set of experiments, and for everything where there's a third copy, I initially planned to transfer it across to that other storage container, but in the end I just got Jebloff out, fetched them from the Galileo's crew quarters, and stashed them back aboard our command pod. The crew of the Galileo make their way through the space station and onto our space plane's crew cabin, and with that we are done and good to go. Our crew say their farewells before they undock and start to make their way back down towards Kerbin. In keeping with the rest of the mission we get a half decent descent. Um, I forget to pump fuel forwards before we, uh, before we enter the atmosphere and uh, yeah that causes a hairy moment or two but uh, it all comes good in the end. We get ourselves a decent landing on the runway back at the KSC with what turns out to be about 4,700 points worth of science. So the Galileo doesn't have any upcoming missions, in fact I'm not even sure if we're going to use it again this series. Maybe to move it away from the space station, but that's probably about it. Nonetheless, we've been in this situation before and uh, just like that other time, uh, we're going to perform our turnaround procedure on it regardless of that. It's just kind of good practice and is in no way, shape or form a stall because I haven't quite finished developing our EVE landing and return vehicle. <clears throat> So we are launching one of our Brunel Mark II rockets. Uh, Corkin Kerman takes his turn in command and he is joined by Gwenby and Dotty. Underneath that fairing we, uh, for the umpteenth time this series, have one of those large 36 tonne fuel tanks full of liquid fuel which we are going to use to start the refueling of the Galileo. And uh, we're also going to hope that the frame rate's slightly better than it was with the space plane. Uh, you probably couldn't see anything because it's at four times time acceleration but uh, yeah, that was pretty bad. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the Galileo in the long run. Uh, our objectives for this series, well, the only two we've got left are a mission to Dres, which is already underway, and uh, a landing mission to Eve, which uh, we'll be doing using our new interplanetary vehicle. Um, one thing I haven't put as an objective for this series is a mission to Gilly, so if I do a follow-up series, I'll probably do a follow-up series. Um, I might take the Galileo off and do that, but, uh, well, we'll, uh, we'll have to see. As we arrive at our space station, the Socrates, the sun is about to set, and uh, in fact it does so as we're a little way into our docking manoeuvres. It's, uh, it's hardly ideal from a video perspective, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll soldier on regardless. 
Having securely attached ourselves and having waited until we're into daylight once again, we uh, we can start the process of transferring that fuel. The Galileo is missing uh, a little under two of those large tanks worth of fuel, so we uh, we fill up its its forward large tank and uh, put the rest of the fuel, what little remains, into that into that rear large tank. There's also a couple of fuel oxidizer tanks on the Galileo, one on the craft itself and one on the lander, and. Uh, well, we've got a little bit of fuel to spare on the CSM, so we uh, we start filling up that uh, that rearmost tank on the Galileo, the Galileo's own fuel oxidizer tank, and uh, we should have plenty left to get back down to Kerbin. With their tasks completed, our Kerbals detach themselves and their now spent fuel tank from the Galileo and start to make their way back down to the surface. Um, so we should be able to fill this thing up in uh, two more trips, uh, one more just to get that uh, that second large fuel tank filled and then another one just to uh, just to fill in whatever we've got left. Once again, we're aiming for the KSC. Once again, we don't quite manage it. Uh, I had meant to make some adjustments to the command module to make this a lot easier, but I sort of forgot to do it before this mission, so we'll have to wait until next time to see how those work out. Uh, as things stand, though, we do at least get a, a nice safe landing, not too far away from the KSC, in Kerbin's Oceans. So that's one refueling mission down and two to go, and uh, with the best part of one of those large tanks still to fill, we are launching another one of our Brunel Mark II rockets. This time, Tommel, Jebloff and Barbus Kerman will be making sure that uh, this goes smoothly. This is basically just a, a carbon copy of the previous mission. Same objectives, same rocket, same payload. Uh, I've just rotated the crew. I do like to give them all a fair turn. The crew of the Galileo are still resting and recuperating back at the KSC after a long interplanetary voyage. Uh, in fact, they had two interplanetary voyages very close to each other, so the uh, the bone density and the muscle mass in their legs is probably non-existent by now, which is, uh, which is not a pleasant thought. Saying that, I don't know how Kerbals adapt to space. Uh, I think it would be quite fitting if their biology was such that they were... Uh, they could cope with a zero-g environment without any problems, but I think we might be straying dangerously close to the territory of fan fiction here, so uh, let's leave that one well alone. Anyway, our crew reach orbit, they retrieve their payload, and they start to make their way towards the Socrates and towards the Galileo, which I'm still not sure what I'm going to do with. Um, it feels a bit weird to just say, well, that's it for this series. We're going to do nothing with it. We're just going to park it there and leave it there. Um, I could launch a mission to Gilly, but that's kind of going to mess with my plans. And I think it might be nice to leave something to do for my older interplanetary craft in any potential new series. So I think we'll just stick with the plan as it is. We arrive at the space station without any sunlight issues this time. And for the first time in quite a while, I think. Um, and we can proceed with our docking with, uh, with good visibility. As I said before, this is pretty much an exact replica of the previous mission. We bring ourselves in on the same docking port and uh, once we're firmly docked we can begin the business of transferring that fuel across. We don't have to fill up this tank all the way so our payload tank does have a little bit left in it. Uh, we'll just discard that. Uh, and also, just like last time, we take the opportunity to siphon off a bit of the CSM's spare fuel and oxidizer to, uh, to finish filling up that, uh, that rearmost tank and start filling, up the, uh, start filling up the lander tank a little bit. With that done, our Kerbals can once again say farewell to their comrades aboard the space station, detach themselves, and start to make their way back down into the atmosphere, discarding their various superfluous bits as they go. Now this time I have remembered to make those adjustments to this craft. Uh, basically I've strapped a couple of drogue chutes to the command module. Uh, now drogue chutes don't, uh, don't slow you down as much as normal parachutes, but they can open at uh, much higher altitudes and speeds, and so should help us slow down if it looks like we're overshooting. We don't get to see them used to full effect here, however. Um, Partly because I haven't set them up properly. I need to tweak them so that they deploy uh, earlier than they currently do. Uh, but mainly because we're coming down exactly where I want us to. Slap bang in the middle of the KSC. In fact, much like our previous successful landing back at the KSC, we land with the command module half on and half off of the launch pad area. So, some refinements to be made, but uh, yeah, it's looking promising. We still have a little bit of refueling to do on the Galileo, so uh, let's crack on with it. Uh, we've got a much lighter payload this time, so we're using our Brunel Mark I rather than our Mark II. And Jebediah, Bill and Bob have finished their recuperation period and returned to active service. 
Um, just to warn you, I was a little bit distracted as I was playing through this. I was having to multitask, and uh, standards do start to slip a little during this mission. Not disastrously so, but uh, yeah, just to warn you. So not quite as identical a mission this time around. Uh, our payload consists of a 9-ton fuel oxidizer tank and one of the large monopropellant tanks. Uh, I say a 9-ton tank, it's not quite full. Uh, I'm only taking up the fuel that I know we'll need, so uh, yeah, a little bit of mass saved there. So a little less weight, a little less mass, and hence a little bit more acceleration uh, should hopefully see this mission completed a little bit quicker. Or at least it would have done had I not been trying to do something else entirely at the same time. Having reached orbit, our crew can fetch their payload and push on to their destination and uh, hopefully finish off the refueling and the turnaround of the Galileo. Uh, as I'm playing through this, I keep thinking, uh, oh crap, I'm going to have to go and move the Galileo soon, park it somewhere else because another craft's going to come back to the Socrates, but... No, it's, uh, it isn't. The uh, Juna mission is still about a year away from Juna and uh, has a, another year plus return journey and our EVE mission hasn't even left yet, so it's fine where it is for the moment. As we arrive at the space station, we find ourselves pretty perfectly positioned to come in and dock on that same docking port uh, for the third mission in a row, which is uh, kind of nice. So we get ourselves securely attached there and now we can begin to transfer the last of the fuel across. It doesn't take us long to fill up the lander's tank, and with that we can start working on the monopropellant, and uh, this was a little bit more of an involved job. We used up a lot of monopropellant on the way home, I just drained it from every available source pretty much, so uh, we've got to go through and make sure we top up absolutely everything we can, and in fact once we've done this I go through all the tanks about two or three times just to make sure this thing is fully refuelled, before we can finally call it a job well done. So once again, our crew depart the space station and start to make their way back down to the surface of Kerbin, uh, discarding their random bits of junk to burn up in the atmosphere as they go. Now, remember how I said that I was playing through this slightly distracted? Well, yeah, that's that really comes into play here. I burn a little bit later than I would have liked on our deorbit burn, and uh, as we're coming in, I don't notice that the uh, drogue chutes can deploy uh, a little bit earlier, so uh, I'm too late in uh, hitting those, and... Uh, all in all, it doesn't go well, and we overshoot the uh, overshoot the KSC by quite some distance. Not to worry, though, I'm sure in the future, uh, if I'm actually paying attention, we can iron those creases out, and uh, that is the Galileo sorted. Now we have some other matters to attend to. So whilst the development of our EVE landing vehicle might not be going as quickly as I'd like, uh, I thought, at the very least, before I left you today, I should show you what we've been working on and how far we've come so far. For our landing vehicle, as you can probably see here, we are going for a space plane. For a few reasons, I mean, it's a little bit different, it's a bit of a challenge. Um, also, there are some advantages to using a space plane to try and get into orbit from EVE. Um, one of the main reasons, though, is that uh, if your low-altitude propulsion is efficient enough, you can, uh, you can visit as many biomes as you like. And with our uh, low-altitude propulsion system, which we'll come onto in a bit, we can literally visit as many biomes as we like. As in, my boredom threshold will probably be the limiting factor here. What are these miraculous engines, I hear you ask? Well, they are the nuclear turbojet from KSP Interstellar, and we've got two of them slung under our wings here. For all intents and purposes, they have unlimited range, and uh, we can use them to fly about in EVE's lower atmosphere, and also to perform the first stage of our ascent back to orbit without having to bring down any additional fuel. Now, whilst these don't need an oxygenated atmosphere to work, they do need some kind of atmosphere. So obviously, as we get higher and higher, these are going to be of less and less use. And uh, that's when our second set of engines kick in for the second stage of our ascent to orbit. These are two Lantern nuclear engines, another engine from KSP Interstellar, which we will be using in their afterburning mode. This mode burns both fuel and oxidizer and uh, does so more efficiently than a chemical rocket whilst uh, still giving us enough thrust to get into orbit, or at least it should do after a couple of design revisions. Those nuclear turbojets won't be staying with us all the way, we'll be taking them down to EVE, uh, using them to fly from biome to biome and then using them to uh, get ourselves up to a decent height in the atmosphere, but uh, once they start running out of air then they, uh, they kind of become dead weight and just holding us down, so we are going to jettison them to, uh, to complete the final stage of our ascent. So this vehicle that uh, Valentina and Dottie are flying is the third prototype that I've made. Uh, 
To get off of EVE, to get into orbit, you need to be up at about 90,000 meters and traveling, I think it's about 3,100 meters per second. In testing so far, this version of the vehicle has managed to get up to 80,000 meters at 2,700 meters per second before it ran out of fuel, so uh, still some improvements to be made, but I think we can get there. Also, I'm not strictly tied to the idea of a single stage to orbit, as you can probably tell by the fact that we're getting rid of our jet engines. So if, uh, if we need to bring up uh, more stages almost in the form of drop tanks, then, uh, then we will do whatever it takes to get this craft up and into orbit. Now, our final vehicle, when it finally does make it into orbit, probably won't have much fuel left uh, when it does so, so uh, our interplanetary vehicle will probably have to do most of the heavy lifting when it comes to rendezvousing the two craft, which it should be able to do, which it should have the Delta V to do uh, once it doesn't have to lug this thing around. So we end our little test flight with a nice safe landing back on the runway at the KSC, and uh, hopefully by the time next week rolls around I'll have something a bit more final to show you, uh, because if I don't, I've got no idea what I'm going to do. Uh, so anyway, yes, that will be all for today. I do hope you've enjoyed it, everybody. If you have, please consider liking, subscribing, possibly even following me on Twitter, link in the description. Uh, I will be back soon, hopefully with this thing finished, uh, but uh, until then, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.